What's up, everybody? Welcome to the last lecture in our States of Matter series. This is lecture number five, and we're going to build upon what we've seen, uh, especially in lectures two and four, where we saw the heat equations on uh, how much energy is required to heat a substance at a specific phase of matter and how much energy is required to cause that substance to overgo a phase change. And we're going to see how those can all be related to create something called a heating curve. So without further chit-chat from myself, we're going to move and uh, start this thing. So heating curves themselves, heating curves are graphs that represent the temperature of a substance as it is heated over time. And we always get kind of like the same setup here. The y-axis will show us the temperature. All right, and the x-axis shows us either time or the total heat or total energy that is absorbed or released if we're going in the other direction and we're actually cooling a substance. So there are a couple parts to these heating curves. There's three diagonal lines, two horizontal lines. All right, but let's take a look uh, at each part. So down here at the bottom is a diagonal line where a solid is getting heated. All right, so first you have to heat the solid up. When you heat the solid up enough, the temperature flattens itself out and... Uh, you get what is called a phase change right in this section right here. In this case, we got the solid melting into a liquid. Notice the temperature is not changing, all right? Whereas when it has just a solid, the temperature was changing. After we have a liquid, that liquid can start heating up. And so we get another diagonal line. Our temperature is changing again, all right? We have a liquid. That liquid will heat up until its temperature starts to level out, and we start to see a phase change again. All right, and in this case, we have a phase change. All right, we have what is known as boiling, another phase change. And that's where the liquid goes to the gas. And then finally, that last little diagonal section is where we have the gas heating up and our temperature is changing again. So there's always these same types of sections, all right? You have a state of matter, it heats till it reaches a phase change point, and then the temperature stays constant while the phase change happens, and then the new phase of matter starts to heat up afterwards. Pretty much all these phase changes look similar, all right? The solid will heat up uh, until it starts to melt, all right? Then the melting happens. Then the liquid heats up until we hit the boiling point. Boiling happens. And finally, the gas will heat up. Now, not everyone has to go through all three phases of matter. You could see it of a more in-depth heating curve of just going from solid to liquid, like a certain temperature below the melting point, watch it melt, and then go above that. So it's kind of hard to uh, contain a gas as as something is boiling, so you would need some type of vessel where you could collect the gas in to then heat that gas. A lot of times, if you're you're heating something up in a lab, the gas is just kind of going off into the atmosphere. All right. Whenever we have a specific phase heat, whenever a specific phase heats, we see a diagonal line. All right, when a specific phase heats. And for phase changes, we see horizontal lines. Each station or each section of the curve is represented by a heat equation. All right, we'll see, we'll kind of break those down in a minute. And then if you add up 
all of the energy for each of the five sections, if you have five, or for all of the sections that you see, you can find out the total amount of energy that is either added in to a substance if it's heating the whole time, or released as a substance goes the other way and is cooling. So you could, you could make these into a cooling curves, and they're just kind of like going backwards on this. We're going to mostly look at the heating curves. Um, the one thing you have to be aware of, and that can kind of pop up and and maybe um, maybe mess things up a little bit, are the three separate MSHAD equations. All right, remember the specific heat is different for each dial, diagonal line for each phase of matter. So you need to know the specific heats for the phase of the substance that you have at that time. And we'll see a little bit of this um, on the next slide. So if we look at this heating curve again, and we have the same arrows, but I'm going to add some other stuff right here. We have a diagonal line, so we have Q equals M shat for the solid. All right, so to find the energy there, we need, you know, the mass and the specific heat of the solid, and it's really important in this area right here that we use the specific heat of the, uh, the solid. After that, we move to a horizontal line where we have melting, so the energy formula for melting is Q equals M times the heat of fusion, mass and the heat of fusion. After the substance melts, the temperature starts changing again in this area where we have um, another diagonal line. So this is going to be Q equals M shad again. But here we have the liquid, so we have to find and use the specific heat for the liquid state of matter in this section. Once the liquid gets hot enough, we have another horizontal line, another phase change here. All right, this is boiling or vaporization, Q equals MH VAP. And then finally, at the very top, we have Q equals M shad again because our gas is getting heated and we need to know and use the specific heat for the gas. All right, and then if we take all of this together, if we add the, the Q values or the heats for each equation, all right, so we add the Qs. In this case, there would be five separate Qs. We can find the total heat, in this case, that was absorbed, um, the total heat used. If we were going backwards, going the other way, it would be the total heat released. So you can always add all this up to find the total heat for uh, this whole situation. And everything would be in the questions or on the graph that you're seeing. All right, the most important thing to do for these is read everything and then figure out what to do. All right, and that's kind of what heating curves are. They're, they're pretty easy. They're the graphical representation of a lot of the other stuff we've talked about um, in these states of matter lectures. And so that is all I have for you right now. Uh, if you have any questions on this, you can reach out to myself or whoever your teacher may be. Uh, maybe you go to the internets to find somebody else explaining it to you, and that is all right as well. So that is it, and uh, you guys have a good one.